Tuesday evening, 8.30 p.m. So you're Tuesday. just getting started. And... Okay, it's Tuesday morning for us, so it's night time. Okay, interesting, interesting. Yeah, we got to get into how you ended up there from uh, from Windsor, Ontario to chilling in Thailand. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> yeah, 35 <Let's>... hours. <laughs> Let's get into it. So first of all, um, <clears throat> you played at the professional level, professional level as a hockey player for 10 years. Um, most professional athletes' uh, careers only last four or five years. You managed to play at the professional level for 10 years. So I want to first off by saying congratulations for that because not too many athletes in general make it to that level, let alone play a decade. So that's definitely an accomplishment in itself. Um, and then I want to specifically get into how were you able to, to, to stay at that level for so long? Um, obviously, your, it's your training and work ethic. Um, and one of the things that I know you incorporated was boxing into your into your program. So just specifically, um, since you incorporated boxing like throughout your 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 hockey career, um, how can you say that it helped your your performance on the ice? Yeah, so I uh, appreciate the, the kind words on the career. Um, but uh, boxing was a big help from day one. Uh, since I incorporated it into my regular routine in the off season, um, you know, just going over things of uh, similarity, and I, I, you know, was picking up on just so many. Just thinking about it, um, you know, I had uh, I put down three: so skating, passing, and shooting. Um, uh, when I when I think of boxing, you're using your hands and your feet a lot. Um, and in skating, it's it's the same kind of thing. You're using uh, your your hands, your arms and your feet to drive to get to the top speed. Um, so that's a very, very similar thing. And, uh, you know, and then I went to passing, uh, you know, accuracy. You want to hit that, hit that tape to tape, they would say, right? So, yeah, and yeah. In, uh, in boxing, it's like, well, you got to hit that, hit that jab, you know, you want to, you want to make that, yeah, that accuracy to, to get on the, the opponent. Um and then to shooting, I mean, um, different angles in your hips, um, moving to the right area to get that shot off in hockey. Um, and then in boxing, it can be related to, you know, moving around and, and, and getting to that right spot to get that, you know, that KO punch or uh, the knockout. Um, so, and all of these exercises, it all creates a mental focus too. For me personally, it just – it got me into a, a good flow of working out and um, increased my focus. Exactly, exactly. Um, so, like, at, a, at all the boxing exercises that you did, from like holding pads to hitting the heavy bag to the double end bag to the speed to the speed bag, which one, uh, which one was your favorite one that you can say like transferred best? Or not, I mean, all of them transfer to, to to your sport, but which one did you have like most fun at doing? <laughs> so. Yeah, I know. I say like two are popping up right now. I think uh, you know, hitting pads is fun. It's kind of like shooting uh shooting pucks on the ice. It's like it's just fun. You're going up, you know, you would hold the pads for me, Cedric, and like I would just, you know, you you're typing out uh different combinations and I'm just, you know, letting loose and just going for it. Um the other one would be uh, footwork drills. I mean, that's that's something that really Really helps your speed. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm glad you brought that up because a lot of you know a lot of people think boxing is just upper body throwing your hands, and then when they get into it, they realize how much it's your whole body that has to be coordinated and synchronized, which is which just helps helps you as right. an athlete overall in general, right? Transfers to other sports. So yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Again, your feet, arms, it's all connected, right? So, I mean, you can you can be a good puncher, but if you can't move to that right spot, it's like. Exactly, being in being in there. It's not about landing the right punch, but being in the right position to land that right the the, the right punch. Same thing on the ice. It's not just about having a, a hard hard slap shot. It's about being in the right position to be able to to be able to, to land that right. So that's how exactly. you know the the footwork in boxing transfers transfers over to hockey, right? Um, mm -hmm. So basically, after after seeing the benefits of how boxing helped your performance on the ice. Uh, do you feel comfortable recommending that all hockey players incorporate boxing into their uh, into their training programs to help them on the ice? 
Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't really see why you wouldn't as a, as a professional hockey player um, at a high level. I mean, you know, obviously you want to, you want to draw down your hockey skills, right? You want to skate, you know, uh, five, six times a week. You want to get to the weight room, do your weights, but to, to put some extra work in like every athlete should, if they want to reach their maximum potential, I mean, boxing is great for that. And on the other hand too, Hockey is like one of the one of the sports where you can actually fight in a game and it's part of the part of the game, you know, and you sit for five minutes and you get back to, and you go play. I mean, it's a, it's an aggressive sport. And why not be able to, like, protect yourself and know what you're doing exactly. um, when you get if you get in that situation? Exactly. Um, just the, I want to get into that a little bit real quick. Like how. Is one of all the hockey, I asked all the hockey players this. How did you come to that decision to be like, all right, this is this is going to be my role on the team? Um, obviously, you know, a, 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 especially these days, you can't just be a goon fighter and like you actually have to have skills. So obviously, you had mm-hmm. skills to match your your fighting skills. But just specifically about the about the fighting part, how did how did that become incorporated into your game? And um, and yeah, just how how did you become that you know the the guy? Yeah, well, like you said, it, it, you you can't really play hockey and not have skill, right? I mean, it's a skillful. I mean, you can't be just one 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 minded or one uh, one attribute type of player, one yeah. dimensional. Yeah. So um, you got to incorporate. And for me personally, like I early in my career, it was uh, I didn't really think much of it. It was just kind of reaction, like you know, off yeah. a hit or you know, a scrum in front of the net and then all of a sudden your gloves are off and, you know, away you go. Um, probably to my third or fourth year, I, I, I got called up to the American Hockey League in Cleveland and, you know, looking around the room and I didn't really see anybody, you know, who was picking up on that role. And, you know, going into like my first or second warm up, you know, we're skating around and the other team has some guy at the red line just kind of barking and trying to intimidate our team and no one was really, you know, stepping up to the plate per se. So I, I kind of took it upon myself and uh, I think it was in the first period. I just skated up to him and he was an older guy, big guy. And it kind of just, yeah, fell right into it. And I enjoyed it. You know, the fans are going crazy. The boys are clapping their sticks and yeah, yeah, you know, it's a, yeah. So, and how, you know, how is that? Um, just wondering the, the the fighting mentality going into it. Like for example, in boxing, you know we you know even at the amateur level, we'll set up a match. Like I'll know ahead of time who you know who the matchup is, you know, and and you know how how I think it's going to go, and, and I can we can prepare for that specific opponent. Um, how is it in hockey? Like, are you looking at the schedule and be like, all right, you know, two days from now I'm fighting this guy, probably fighting this guy, and da 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 and he fights like this. Like how, how was the mentality when you're going through the schedule and uh, yeah, yeah. Just, just going through that. Yeah. It's a good thing we have YouTube because I spent many hours on there researching fighters and, and looking up what they do and, yes. and exactly what you said, like, you know, just scouting and, and seeing who's up next, you know, one fight would be on a Saturday night and we play Wednesday in Milwaukee and we, you know, we're facing another big guy. It's like, okay, there's potential. I'm going to fight this guy. So I better be, I better know what he's doing. Yes. And uh, so it's good. It's good to be prepared. One more, for, one more thing about, of course, we, what you just said right there, it's, <laughs> it's an understatement. Yeah. It's good to be prepared. That's, that's pretty big. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, yeah. Just briefly talk. I remember you on my, my boy, um, <clears throat> My boy, Win City Sports, my boy, Drake, Win City Sports podcast. And you were talking about mm-hmm. uh, the, uh, uh, your, your, your heavyweight knockout. I believe his name, name was Brian McGrenn. Mm, uh, yeah, did, yeah. Uh, it was. Just really talk about that one because I'm, I'm pretty sure I, I don't follow, obviously, the, the hockey fights as much as boxing. But from what I understand, from what I understand, he was the heavyweight champ at the time. And uh, you were like the, the young rookie coming up. Anyways, go ahead. You just tell that story real quick. Yeah, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was a time where I was trying to make a point and, you know, that's the big bad dog in the league and he's had numerous years in the NHL fighting top, top, tough guys. So 
I had a little bit of research on him, you know, like I've watched his fights. I was a fan, um, you know, earlier on, he was like fighting Ty Domi and I was watching the least back then. And, wow. And, you know, so it was kind of, you know, bizarre in that way, but, um, you know, funny story. I mean, I, the first period I just skated up to him and I dropped my gloves, like kind of nervous. I'm like, let's go. And he like looked at me like, who is this kid? I'll tell you, I'll tell, I'll tell you when we fight. Wow. And I was like, okay, <laughs> I pick, picked, picked up my gloves, had to go to the first intermission. I remember sitting next to a guy, Joey Hishin, and we we're just looking at each other and like, yeah, it's coming, coming here in the second. So <laughs> second period comes, I line up on the, on the circle, uh, center ice. And, uh, I see him jump over the bench and, um, basically, you know, and now it's time. So it's, uh, uh, and then the fight happened, you know, when you're, when you're in a fight, it's kind of like everything just slows down. Right. Yes. It's just like you're in a different, different world. And it's like, yes. Yes. I, yes. I, rem I remember in that fight, he was, he came out strong. He was hitting me with numerous right hands and he doesn't throw soft. I mean, he, he hits pretty <laughs> hard. And, uh, I got to a point where it was like, okay, either I'm going to like, like, this is it, like, or I gotta, I gotta start throwing back, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you and were surviving, you were, you could, you could take a sip of your drink real quick. You were, you were surviving yeah, yeah. In, in the beginning, and like you said, the best way you describe it, it was kind of, it was kind of shaky. You, you got to a point where, like, all right, what's about to happen right now? Either, either you gotta stop this, or you gotta do something to, 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 to stop the fire coming at you. And boy, mm -hmm. did you ever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right hand. Accurate again. We talked about the accuracy. I took because that's what I tell people all the time. Most people could take punches, you know, any anywhere like like on the face. Mm. You can still take those. You still. You, that's why you see sometimes in a fight you see a guy bleeding from the or or girl bleeding from the face, yeah. and, and they can still go. But this right here, anywhere along the jawline, that's that's the bullseye, and that's exactly yeah. where you caught him. And it was just boom, like, and that's you know when they say ko time lights off. Yeah, KO time for sure. If yeah, you hit that, yeah, yeah. and the thing about that, the thing about that punch too, which I'm learning with the coach here, uh, Tiger Muay Thai, uh, John Boy, you know the right hand, the straight is good, but like if you come and like put emphasis on coming down a little bit, yes, yes. and you hit that coming down, I mean yeah. it just gives it so much more power. Yes, and, yes. And uh, <laughs> you know, I think I hit it. I think I hit him with one or two of those, but yeah, oh yeah, it's okay. uh. The bullseye, yeah, KO shot. Uh, okay. Nice, nice. So, um, yeah. Switching the focus now. Um, like I said before, you were able to play almost a decade um, <clears throat> at the professional level, and uh, this question is specifically for for any kids that are listening right now that uh, aspire to play a decade at the pro pro level. Um, how were you able to stay focused? Because again, the 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 average career span for a professional athlete in any sport is four to five years you played a decade how were you able to stay focused how were you how did you not fall you know a uh, uh, victim to the things that a lot of the athletes fall to x factors that uh, might make you lose your focus and not be able to continue how'd you do that I think I just had a, a resilient spirit my whole career. I mean, even as a child growing up, um, you know, I had some good people around me. My father, who gave me a good, you know, who instilled a good work ethic in me, um, you know, unconditional love from my mother, um, you know. But, I, yeah, that resilient spirit, of you know, it's not really just a straight line up or straight along across. It's a lot of ups and downs, peaks and valleys, and, I mean, you hear it all the time. It's just like how you can react to the ups and lows, right? And just staying calm and and persistent, having having a goal in mind, having a vision, and and just keep chipping away. And that's that's what I want to do. And there's part of me still that you know is saying like, hey, it's it's not over yet. Like it's uh, you know, like there's still part of me that's that's hungry to get after, um, you know, competing and and playing. And um, that's just how I am. It's just like a you know. Um. Nice. Yeah. Got you. I got you. Um. And so, uh, um, you know, as far as the boxing goes, 
even even after uh, their careers, a lot of the, the the pro athletes that I've worked with, you know, we still we still work together even after their careers are done. You know, just everyone wants to, wants to keep themselves in shape. Um, you know, just even if they're not playing competitively anymore. Um, you, however, um, are one of the only athletes that I've worked with that took it to the next level and actually decided to have a, a competition in Muay Thai. Um, so I definitely want to get into that. And how how did that come about? And I'm assuming that's one of the reasons why you're living in Thailand now. Um, so, yeah, this, how, how did that come about? Yeah, it was um, just basically. Yeah, um, I'm in Thailand, and what's their <laughs> what's their main what's their main sport here? It's it's not Muay every Thai. Friday. It's Muay Thai. Like that's you know in Canada, people would be going to the rink on a Friday night, you know, yeah, to go watch yeah. Spitfires, and yes. here it's like you're you're going to the ring. Every there's a fight every probably a couple times a week. There's fights going on. Like you can always watch a fight here, and. Uh, <laughs> From you know, little Muay kids Thai to adults, right? To little kids to adults. We watched two uh two eight year olds fight and like just going toe to toe, like like <laughs> that's when they start. It's crazy, but that's how like and then over time, like these kids will turn into men who have over three hundred fights in their life. Like that's that's the main uh the main thing. And you know, being here, it's like I want to be, you know, take part in the culture. Obviously, you know, the food is great here. Uh, the people are very nice, but like, I, you know, being an athlete, I thought it would be really cool to, uh, to, you know, participate in some combat sport and especially at Tiger Muay Thai, um, you know, world renowned gym, um, where a lot of champions are made. Um, it was cool. I just kind of volunteered. The coach asked if anyone wanted to fight, uh, Western boxing. And I, you know, I was like, yeah, let's, let's get after it. And, uh, so and uh, it turned out well. It was fun to compete again and yeah, uh, get in that, that mindset. One, you had that. I watched your one competition that you won there. That was pretty cool, man. How? So okay. So how? Compare <laughs> compare your 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 Muay Thai boxing match to uh, was it? Sorry, was it kicking and punching or was it just punching? No, no, no. It was just boxing and and the and nice. the, the guy. Yeah, he said it was the, the softer side of of. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> of uh you know combat combat sports but uh softer side <laughs> you know i just wanted to get in there and compete but you know maybe next time you know there's a lot of athletes here that go back and forth from muay thai mma they'll get a boxing fight if they can just to you know mix it up so so what can you uh, how can you uh compare or or um compare or contrast or whatever um a hockey fight to a a, a, a boxing fight yeah, it's like the same build up, like in mentally, um, just thinking about, you know, the other opponent, you know, is he going to come at me this way? Is he going to, you know, what if I hit him with this right? Is he going to, you know, just, just going over and over, like you, you fight him over and over in your brain, like, and then, uh, you know, once the fight day comes, it's just, uh, basically it's all the work you put in. And I worked pretty hard leading up to that fight. Um, with different coaches every day and um yeah once you get in there it's like that slow motion kind of feeling you tap gloves but it is you know like i didn't really know what to do when i went into the ring like i, I circled around yeah. you know uh <laughs> oh but yeah I I kinda, know, yeah thing. you listen i know you listen to your coaches just you know stuck to the fundamentals and yeah uh, it was simple nice 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 All right. Okay. So the last thing that I wanted to get into specific, specifically about uh, mental health. Um, one of the great things about, about boxing, not about the competitive side, but just about the training part itself is uh, how it helps build mental strength. Just in general, I believe if you have like, for someone that has a lot of whatever anxiety or stress or whatever from work or school mm -hmm. or social settings or your sports, the pressure from sports. I just think getting yourself physically tired helps get some of the anxiety or stress like out, you know, out from, from, from your body. Um, I believe yeah. it's better than medication. Um, 
course, there's mm -hmm. different forms of, of mental health issues, but I believe boxing helps with all of them. Um, I know you're big into to mental health awareness. So I just wanted to ask you, you know, how, how did you get into it and, you know, how are you spreading the word, I should say? Yeah. Um, well, I guess it uh, touched base on the last thing you said, just by kind of spreading what I'm, what I'm doing, you know, a positive, you know, been posting a lot about, you know, being healthy and, and working out and, you know, boxing and, and just a lot of, a lot of good stuff you can put in, you know, into, um, you know, mental health and awareness, you know, by showing your actions and, um, yeah, man. And like doing, I, doing healthy stuff, like is, is the best thing for you. Like, like you said, like you don't really need medication for, for a lot of these things. And, and a lot of people get locked into the mindset where they think they yeah. do. Like, like yeah. I did personally, I, I thought I needed different, um, you know, we can say chemicals or um, different sort of things that were, you yeah. know, making me feel a different way. But really at the end of the day, all I really needed to was get up, go for a run, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. go go lift go lift some weights, exactly. you know, do some stuff, do some stuff that's gonna make you feel good. And then all those and, things like uh, starting with with that stuff, you know, just simply just getting up and doing something. You don't even have to go for a run if, if you're at you know really at a, at a at a baseline level. Just go for a fast walk, you know, just to just to mm. keep it simple and just slowly yeah. build slowly build your way up uh, from there. And even when it comes. After you get yourself physically active, you're going to want to see, like, your body's going to want to eat healthier. Not that you have to force yourself to eat healthier, but just because you're, you're more physically act active, your body's going to want you to, to eat more healthier. So, you know, just little things like making sure you drink enough water instead of, instead of extra juice or pop or stuff like that. That's the snow, that's the, the, the positive snowball, snowball effect that, um, you know, being physically active. You know, of course, one of the highest levels of being physically active is, is the boxing. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I just I just want to 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 bring that to to light, and I know that uh, you're you're pretty yeah. good on, on the mental awareness part. So thank you very much for for doing that, and uh, hope you can t continue um, do that too. Yeah, yeah, uh, absolutely. Anything um, else? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just going to add to that. Like, uh, I guess this can be, you know, what you were just going to tell me. But, yeah, like, you wake up with your, your thoughts. You go to bed with your thoughts, right? It's like, uh, you know, believe in yourself at the end of the day. Um, there's always going to be people saying or trying to label you, people who doubt you, um, you know. And it doesn't really matter what they think. It's what your mind is telling yourself and, and uh, you know, who you believe you are. Um that's the biggest thing for my mental health is like just kind of, you know, obviously doing the right things to, to, to daily uh, make myself feel good. But um, yeah, having faith and knowing everything's going to be okay and then putting in the work. So. Exactly. Exactly. All right, Dan. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Maggio for taking your time to do this. Um, you have a very good rest of your night. Stay positive, stay strong, keep working hard in the gym and in the ring too. And uh, we'll definitely keep in touch. If there, yeah, you know, if there's, I plan on doing some more, um, you know, some more mental health uh, awareness stuff in the future. So I know you'll definitely want to be a part of that. So we will definitely keep in touch. Cool, awesome, man. I appreciate the, appreciate this uh, interview podcast. This is great, man. What you're doing. So thank you. That's right. That's it. One, two, three, smack that thumbs up for this video, smack it, baby!